Hello and welcome to Two Car Pros. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to service your throttle bore and actuator for a 2005 F-150 5.4 liter V8. So before we get started I wanted to show you the codes the truck's throwing that led me to this conclusion. It's a P206 code, throttle actuator control system, which typically means that it's dirty and needs a service. The next one's kind of more of the same, and then they just repeat. So that's why we're doing what we're doing today. Okay, so this part I can't give you too much help on, unfortunately, because when I bought this truck, it has an aftermarket <coughs> intake on it, so your intake's gonna look a little bit different, but a lot of the components are gonna be similar. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is unplug both these things. This one's real simple. I like just getting a standard screwdriver to pop that out. And then it should just wiggle off. Now the now this thing on the left here, we need to push down, and then it pulls straight off. Okay, so on the stock intake, I'm pretty sure these are the same. These, um, they're kind of like stud nuts. That's what I'm going to call them anyway. They're 10 millimeters, so either a deep well socket or a wrench, or if you have the luxury of a ratchet wrench, one of those. Okay, so there's a anchor bolt that holds the intake on. It's right here. Kind of tough to see. It's right where my tip of my pointer finger is. It is also 10 millimeters. There we go. Now it's time to remove the boot that connects the filter to the intake tube. This will definitely look different on your stock intake. I'm just trying to do the best I can. I want to put a stock intake back on this truck just because I think they work better. I know it's an unpopular opinion, but it's mine. If you're wondering, these are also, uh, well, these aren't also, these are eight millimeter if my camera can actually focus. There we go. Yeah, so once the intake boot has been released, we can move like that. Okay, with everything disconnected and unbolted, we should be able to lift the intake out. Okay, so the next thing we need to focus on is unplugging this electrical connector here on the throttle housing. Get a standard screwdriver and uh, just push it up like that, fully out of the way. There we go. Okay, so I push this red safety all the way up, use a standard screwdriver to kind of massage it along because I guarantee that electrical connector has been on there since the truck was made and so it was a little stuck. Oh yeah. Now we can worry about the other one on the right side of the throttle body. Okay, so this might be a little hard to see. But underneath this gray connector here, there's one of those red safeties you need to slide out. Now, the easiest way I found to do it is if you have a standard screwdriver and you just reach behind it and you push this way with the safety. There we go. So that connector needed a little convincing as well. That's what it looks like when it's off. Um, so dust gets in there. It makes the safety a little bit tricky to get off, but you can see it now. See that red safety? It's underneath it and you got to pull that outward. Once you do that though, we can worry about unbolting the throttle body from the engine. Okay, so there are four 10 millimeter bolts that hold the throttle body to the upper air intake. There's two here. And there's two on the back side. I can't really show you the two in the back side, but just imagine the two in the front, but on the back because there's four total. And we need to remove them. I found it easier to do the top right one last because you can kind of move the throttle body out of position to get to it because it's kind of tricky. There we go. And now we can remove the whole unit. Here's a pro tip. While you're working with the throttle body off the top of the upper air intake, stuff a rag or something in there so nothing gets into your engine. 
Okay, so this is what we're working with. This is the throttle bore here. And as you can see, it is absolutely disgusting and filthy in every single facet. So we need to clean this and make it look like brand new. How we're gonna do that is carburetor cleaner. You can get this at pretty much any auto parts store. They should have carb cleaner. It works great. Don't breathe any. Or don't try to breathe too much. Maybe wear a mask. Definitely wear gloves. You don't want this stuff on your skin. Okay, so I'm probably gonna fast forward this part or maybe do a fade away because I'm literally just opening this up, the throttle plate up, and cleaning all in there. So I'll come get you guys when that's done. The basics is Basics is spray a little in there and wipe it out and try to get it as clean as possible. Okay, so this is kind of what the throttle body should look like after you've cleaned it. Notice how nice the inside bore is now and the plate itself. There is going to be a little bit of residual stuff you're not really going to be able to get out of there, but just do your best to make it as clean as possible using the carburetor spray. As you can see, it is worlds better than it was when I started previously. You can see by the rag that I used, it's filthy. All of this was in there, so that could be why the truck's throwing that code. Now we need to put this back in. Okay, so we're here back at the top of the intake manifold. And we're going to grab the rag we used to keep stuff out and try to clean up that mating surface. When you're brushing, make sure you brush outward so that way nothing falls in there. That'd be bad. There we go. Okay, and now we can replace the throttle housing. Now before we plug everything in, we're gonna need to put the bolts in obviously. They are 80 inch pounds and make sure you do them in an X pattern. So you do one up here, one down here, one down there, one up there. And don't tighten them down all the way. Just thread them all by first, then tighten one and do an X pattern from there. And I absolutely recommend doing the top right one first because it is the hardest to get to. Okay, so let's put those bolts back in. Okay, so now we got our torque wrench here set to 80 inch pounds. That's like 6.66 uh, foot pounds. Uh, if you don't have a torque wrench that'll go that low, it's understandable. Uh, wrist tight is probably acceptable as well. The point of the matter is not super Herculean tight, just tight enough is probably okay. Oops. Make sure that's not sitting on there and it's not good. Okay. Always remember going the cross pattern. Some people call it an X pattern. Cross is also good. There we go. There we go. And the last one. And there you have it. Now we can plug it back in. So there's two connectors here. Get this one out of the way. We need this one. So make sure that the safety is up, which it is, and push it straight down, and then push the safety back into its spot. And we need to do the same thing to the other side, making sure that the safety is up, and we can push it on. There's really no way I can show you this with too great a detail. So if you're wondering, the red safety points downward. So it's far and away from you the next time you need to take that off. So it's hard to access. Very good. Now what we can do is replace the intake. 
Okay, with our throttle body housing back in place, we can replace the intake. And look, I managed to find a stock intake for the truck. So that's exciting. We just need to make sure it is in place, which it is now. And then we need to plug in that's that uh, mass airflow sensor. Okay, now we need to plug in this air sensor. That's plugged in. We need to plug in this crankcase pressure thing. There we go. That's plugged in. Now we can put the bolts back in. Okay, so there's four bolts that hold in the box, just like there's four bolts to remove it. However, again, my top right one, someone busted it off before I bought the truck. So, three's good. Good enough. It's a C, right? Now here's the trick to these 10 millimeter, I don't know, nut bolts, I want to call them. Uh, use a wrench. And you don't want them too terribly tight. It's not actually holding on anything that needs to be super incredibly Hulk tight. Um, you know, just wrist tight is really good. I don't really have a torque spec for you, but you know, finger or wrist tight is good. You don't need, this doesn't need to be held on like it's gonna fly off or it weighs a lot. It, you're just holding down plastic, so just use your better judgment. And I say that because obviously someone who put this intake on at one point, not me, I must stress that it was not me, um, over tightened it and busted one of the studs off. Uh, so I'm gonna have to drill that out and order a new set of bolts. Maybe I'll get chrome ones or black ones. I'm gonna go black, that'd be cool. That can be a cool kid. There we go. So that's nice back in place and now we can put the filter in. And now we can put the filter back in. Just slides in place. And now we can put the intake boot back in. So our final step is to replace the last piece of the air intake. Put the snorkel in first, like that. Insert it in. And you might be asking me, well you took an aftermarket one on, put the stock one on. This is true because I can't believe I actually found a stock intake for this truck. Apparently it's super hard to find a stock intake. I actually had to get it used because Ford wanted 400 for a new one. And I'm a firm believer in stock intakes. And we need to replace that 10 millimeter bolt with the wide washer. There's really no torque spec for that bolt. I mean, there might be, but it's kind of unnecessary. It just needs to be tight. And that feels very tight, so that's good. Perfect. We're all done. Okay, so here's our scanner. We have the ignition turned to the second position, so the accessory switch is on. And now we can go erase our trouble codes that we found earlier. Because we think we've repaired it, and hopefully we have. So there's our code we hopefully have eradicated plus a few more. It seems to just like to repeat itself a lot. Kind of saying the same things over and over. Okay. So go back, and then we're gonna go down and hit our race codes because we are pretty sure we fixed the problem. Now look at that. The diagnostic information has been cleared. So now we can unplug this, turn the engine, or not the engine, turn the ignition all the way off, and then turn the engine back on, go for a drive and see if the check engine light comes back on. So that's how to clean your throttle body housing on a Ford F-150 5.4 liter V8 from 2005. Now, I drove the truck around for a few weeks and the trouble codes have not come back, so that fix totally worked for those two trouble codes. If you're still getting those two trouble codes, I would then move on to the throttle pedal positioning sensor and replace that. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe, and I'll catch you next time.